We do have sound, all right. Hello everyone. Well, that was a journey and a half. Um, I have, uh, I was originally planning to go live at uh, eight o'clock today, so I have been sat in front of my computer since 7.15, um, trying to figure out what the hell was going on and trying to get things set up. And then I decided to, uh, I wanted to change up a bit, so I decided I wanted to play Sonic Advance tonight rather than, um, uh, rather than Sonic Unleashed, um, for a couple of reasons. Partly because, um, you know, this is, uh, uh, this is, this is Sonic's birthday week, so this is Sonic's birthday month, so I've been playing Sonic games, obviously. But, uh, because, uh, this week was the 20th anniversary of the release of the Game Boy Advance. Uh, in the UK, um, which means it is the 20th anniversary of the day that I bought a console on launch day for the first time. So I thought, uh, why not play some Sonic Advance for you guys? And uh, oh, uh, Dr. Dead's already here. Hello. I saw your Twitter complaints. Yes. Um, so I plugged in my GameCube. I plugged in the cables into the capture card, the same capture card that I was using on Sunday for Sonic Heroes without a single issue. Um, and it suddenly decided that it wasn't going to recognize the picture. Um, so, yeah, uh, out of nowhere, I had no picture whatsoever. And my phone is still going. Um, so I have spent the last hour plugging things in, unplugging things, restarting my PC, uh, just in general, just trying everything under the sun, changing settings, deleting stuff, re-adding stuff, um, and nothing concrete worked, as far as I could tell. Um, so, uh, but I finally got it, uh, I, I finally got it to actually show the image, because the thing was, the image was showing up in the capture card software, it just wasn't showing up in OBS for some reason. Um, Hello everyone, who else have we got? We've got Deacon, we've got Fangs, hello. You're on the other side of the stream. I know, because for once I'm using my CRT, which is on this side of my uh, this side of my monitor. I've got my monitor in the middle here, I've got my HDTV, which is my second screen here, and then I've got my CRT, which is here. So anytime I do stuff on my CRT, uh, I turn this way instead. Um, and uh, is this an actual Game Boy Advance? Um, I am assuming you're referring to the potato quality of the uh, of the capture. Yeah, that's a little worse than I was expecting. Um, I don't know why it's like that. Um, we do have actually got sound. Um, actually, while I'm explaining all this, I'm going to go into the. Uh, I'm going to stick on some uh, classic Sonic tunes because this game does have uh, some GBAized versions of classic Sonic tunes. So let's have a little two-player Emerald Hill Zone, shall we? Let me know how the um, audio is, if it's too loud, if, it's, if, uh, if you can hear me all right. Um, so yeah, basically, I plugged in. Uh, it sounds okay, cool. Um, audio is perfect, thank you. Um, well, I mean, as perfect as it can be for a, a, a Game Boy Advance. So no, this is the GameCube Game Boy player that I am playing this on. Oh, sorry to answer the question from like 10 minutes ago. Um, yeah, this is the GameCube Game Boy player, and yeah, it's the same cables, it's composite rather than component, but it's the same capture card and the same cables, and for some reason OBS just would not display the damn thing. So I have spent the last hour and a half trying to figure this out. Um, so my plan was for tonight to do a full playthrough of Sonic Advance, and then maybe have a play with the other characters, because I wanted to show off the fact that this is one of the few games in the series that has playable Amy in a 2D form that actually really works. Um, but I don't know if we're going to have time for that, because all, all I want to do now is try and play and beat the game for you guys. Um, so yeah, like I said, uh, I'm doing this, uh, for those that just joined and just missed the intro, the reason I'm doing this is because I was going to be playing Unleashed tonight, what, um, but... Uh, this week, not only was it Sonic's 30th birthday yesterday, and we will be celebrating that properly tomorrow, assuming all the cables work, um, but this week on the 22nd of June was the 20th anniversary of the Game Boy Advance coming out in the UK, and it was the first time that I ever bought a console on launch day. Um, so we're celebrating two, uh, two uh, anniversaries this week, because I because I like to multitask and I like to double team. 
and uh, I'm bi anniversarial and whatever other words you want to use. Um, so. Uh, this is my uh, actual Game Boy Advance cartridge, which is why the quality is a little crap. Because I was thinking, you know, when I was wrestling with all the capture cards and the cables and everything like that, I was thinking, you know, it would be so much easier if I could just emulate this. The quality would be better, I wouldn't have to faff around with all this stupid capture card nonsense. But there's something about playing the authentic original version, my original copy of the game, on the actual hardware. There's something, it's kind of like... Like, I didn't get until a few years ago why people loved listening to old records and listening to old vinyl. And the reason is... Actually, I should probably just start the game because otherwise we're never going to get to, um... We're never going to get to it. So... Yeah, so there are six zones plus a final zone and an extra zone. Um... And my favourite zone in the game is Zone 6, Act 1, um, which I will hopefully explain to you if we get there, but unfortunately we have to get through Zone 5, which is the worst zone in the game. Um, just like the original Sonic 1, my favourite zone in the game is just after the worst zone in the game. Um, it would be weird to celebrate the GBA's birthday by playing a completely fake GBA. That is true. Unfortunately, I am technically playing a fake GBA, because it's a, it's a GameCube-shaped GBA. Um, I do actually have my original. Hang on. There we go. Glacier blue. See through. Still got it. Still works. I'll keep that there. Uh, <laughs> I have all my handhelds in here. I've got the uh, got the GBA SP as well. Bought that in Florida. Um, got that with Pokemon Ruby, I think. I have my uh, Guitar Hero DS Lite, which unfortunately doesn't work anymore, which is a shame. Uh, but that's where all my handheld games live in that cupboard, and that's not going to shut it. There we go. So yeah, uh, yeah. I I used to think for I used to think for ages this was called Arctic Blue, but apparently Arctic Blue was the um, uh, was a GBA SP color, and this is Glacier Blue. Um, but yeah, the very first game I got with it was F-Zero Maximum Velocity, uh, which uh, was incredible. It was the uh, first F-Zero I ever played, um, but it was really good. The sh like, you, you press down both shoulder buttons to, uh, to activate the boost, and um, the fact that the, the, like a handheld had shoulder buttons, I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Um, so yeah, so yeah, like I say, let's get started. Um, uh, yeah, so... Playing the original hardware or the original game is like, I get why people listen to the original vinyl of original records now. Because, yeah, the quality's not as good. Yeah, it's a lot harder to play it if you don't have the right capability. But there's something about the sort of romanticism, the nostalgia of playing the original. Um, and we will be seeing more of that tomorrow night. Because my plan for tomorrow night is to get out my original Mega Drive, my 27-year-old Mega Drive, and, um, and do a full playthrough of the original Sonic Trilogy. Speed, speed running it, well, I say speed running it, you know, it'll take me several hours, but beating it as fast as I can. Um, which means that if you, are, if you live in America, you will get to see the original slowed down PAL version of Sonic 1 on the Mega Drive, which runs at 5 sixths of the speed and is really trippy to anyone who grew up with the, uh, with the NTSC version. Um, before we start as well, there is some admin because we got one new follow. Uh, while I was offline, so uh, Deviant Fart, thank you very much for the follow. Love that name. Uh, anyway, let's get started. Your DS was the one before the DS lights. I had a D I had an original DS as well, um, which I gave to my mum, I believe, so she could play Picross on it. But and we're off. So this was the first sort of traditional 2D Sonic game to come out since. Uh, since Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I think, there may have been a couple of Game Gear games that came out after that, but I can't think of any other version that came out. This came out in 2001, I believe. Uh, no, 2002, maybe. But, um, this is an incredible game that is... Basically, until Sonic Mania came out, I was thinking this was the, uh, this was the spiritual sequel to, um... To, uh, to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, because not only does it have Sonic, Tails and Knuckles, but it has playable Amy as well. And it has grinding from Sonic Adventure 2. You know, it's just... And, and the sprite work is incredible. Like, when I got Animal Crossing for the GameCube, and we will be uh, we will be uh, heading over to Smash to Pieces' final stream for uh, Animal Crossing tonight, but when I got Animal Crossing for the GameCube, 
I would go into the uh, designer and uh, and I would recreate the Sonic Advance sprites. In, um, oh, I forgot to look at what my time was. Did anyone see what my time was on that? Because I always used to, um, I used to do like speed runs of Neo Green Hill Act One, and I used to. I think my record was 30, 35, 33 seconds, something like that. I probably, would, I, I wouldn't have got anywhere near close to that, but um, on that one. But uh, but yeah. I mean, this has got like it's got trampolines. It's got these springy things that are really cool. Now this, you have to hold down the R button, I believe, to grind. Yeah, there we go. This game had so many sort of evolutions. Time was 56. Okay, I was nowhere cl nowhere near close. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks. You say that's a bizarre regional difference. I assume you're referring to the slowed down Sonic 1 on the Mega Drive that I was talking about. Um, it's, uh, it's just because old uh, European CRTs ran at 50 hertz rather than 60 hertz in America. Um, and so uh, stuff ran at, instead of running at 60 FPS, it ran at 50 FPS, or if it didn't run at 30, it ran at 25. Um, and it meant that every, uh, every game developer who wanted to release a, a game in the European market had to convert the game to run on PAL televisions with the slower frame rates. And most of the time, they just, they slowed down the, uh, they slowed down the frame rate and then sped the rest of the game up to compromise to account for it. Um, if you've ever seen a, a speedrunning documentary, like one of uh, Summoning Salt's documentaries about Mario Kart 64, he talks about how uh, PAL and NTSC have different time trial times, and that's the reason, is because of the slower frame rate in PAL. Um, they didn't, I don't think they sped up the timer to make it sort of one second per second, if that makes any sense. This is a really cool second level, like the, the secret base zone with um, the searchlights and everything. Unfortunately, that's the only bit of the searchlights that you see, and then you're just into a sort of generic sort of uh, metropolis style, sort of machinery style stage. Um, so the, uh, the slowdown on uh, PAL versions, there are very few games where they didn't account for it all the way. Um, most games, if you played the PAL version versus the uh, the US version or the Japanese version, you couldn't tell the difference. You couldn't tell unless you had very, very good eyes in terms of identifying 30 FPS versus 25 or identifying 60 FPS versus 50. Um, which, if it's consistent, I don't know that you, the average person would. You know, obviously, if there's slowdown from 60 to 50, you'd probably notice it a bit more. But um, if it is just a locked, steady 50 FPS, most people probably wouldn't notice the difference. Um, and yes, but it meant that everything everything else that the developers would do when they converted something from NTST to PAL, they'd have to speed it all up to account for that. Um, and that would mean uh, speeding up the music, it would mean possibly speeding up the animations, speeding up the... Uh, speeding up just the general flow of the game, sometimes even affecting the, the physics of it, just so that everything uh, was recreated as it should be, so that it was a like-for-like -like conversion. And most games, they achieve this without much of a problem. Um, there are two notable exceptions I can uh, tell, think of off the top of my head. Um, one of them is Pikmin for the GameCube. The original Pikmin for the GameCube, I think I've talked about this before, the original Pikmin for the GameCube on the uh, European version, the days are about three minutes longer than they are in the American Japanese version. Um, a standard day length in Pikmin, and this is true across Pikmin 1, 2, 3, and all the re-releases of those games. Um, the standard length of a day in the Pikmin games is about 13 and a half minutes, but on Pikmin 1 for the GameCube on the European version, um, which I'm going to be playing later this summer, um, is uh, is about 16 and a half minutes. So you have a little bit more time to think about what you're doing. You don't really have much more time to do a lot more because obviously the frame rate is slower and so the animations are a little slower and so you can really only, you can't get done anything more than you could do in the American version so there's no inherent advantage there. But you do have a little bit more time to think about what you're doing. You know the Pikmin move a little slower and you can kind of strategize a bit more. Um, and then the other game, that has notable uh, PAL slowdown is Sonic 1. 
because I don't know if Sonic Team had ever developed a game before and didn't realise what they were doing, but uh, Sonic 1, just the entire game runs at 5 sixths of the speed of the American version. So I spent, literally I would say, the first 12, 15 years of my life thinking that the music in Sonic 1 was 5 sixths of the speed that it actually was. You know, the first time I actually heard a Sonic 1 track in a different game, in a, in a different, either in a different game or in a different, um, or like on the internet or something like that, I was surprised because like, why is this running faster than normal? Um, but I was the weird one. It might have been when I played, um, was it when I played Mega Collection for the first time? I, I can't remember when I would have played Sonic 1 outside of that. Oh, Lightning Shield, nice. But yeah, so you'll see that tomorrow night. Uh, you'll see me play... Um, you'll see me play uh, the slowed down version of Sonic 1 on the original hardware. Yeah, because uh, later in the summer, uh, I'm going to be streaming Pikmin again, and I'm going to be doing something that uh, that I haven't done since I was a teenager uh, with the original copy of the game. I'm going to be attempting the 9-day challenge, um, which is kind of like a speedrunning technique. It's basically playing the game as optimally as possible. Um, and I loved Pikmin so much as a kid that I, uh, I successfully did that quite a few times. Lightning Shield is the one elemental shield that survived past Sonic 3 before it was brought back to Sonic Mania. That's a good point! I didn't even think about the fact that this game doesn't have the bubble shield with the flame shield. So, this might be my favourite casino level in the franchise. Partly because it doesn't have any of those uh, stupid uh, pinball tables that you get stuck in. It does still have the flippers and the bumpers, but there's so much more momentum to the thing. Look at this, look. Plus the music's great. Like you're pinging off the flags. Okay, I'm not de I'm not demonstrating the momentum of this level very well. We need to need to get higher up. I unfortunately went straight to the bottom route, which is uh, not great when you're trying to show off the speed of a level. There we go. Yep, the balloons from, um, the balloons and the, uh, bumpers from Carnival Night make a reappearance. Like each other bones beyond a unique jump ability. Yeah, I think, I think you're right with that. Yeah, see these these um, flag things. I don't know why, but this level is just more than any other casino level in the um, in the franchise. I feel like this uh, this level is great fun. If you haven't played the advanced games, I highly recommend them. Sonic Two is hard as hell. Sonic Advance Two rather is hard as hell, um, which seems to be a trend amongst the Sonic sequels. I I note. Because um, apparently Sonic 2 on the Game Gear is incredibly hard as well, because I'm going to try streaming that at some point, and I feel like I'm not going to get through it without save states. I might have to do that one on an emulator. Um, and then obviously Sonic 2, I would say, is... Well, is Sonic 2 harder than Sonic 1? Actually, probably not. I would say Sonic 2's special stages are harder than Sonic 1, but Sonic 1 has Labyrinth in it, which makes it, by definition, the hardest and most annoying game in the series. But I feel like with the later levels, or the later games, Sonic 1 was, the, the first game in the series is them getting used to the mechanics and getting the engine right and everything like that, and then the second one is them going, okay, let's make it hard now. You know? But yeah, this is, everyone was talking about how uh, in the 2000s, Sonic was having a string of terrible games or a string of poorly received games. But no one was talking about the handheld games, because the handheld games were superb all the way through from, uh, I would say from, certainly of the ones I've played, from Sonic Advance through to Sonic Rush Adventure, were all amazing games. And then they started making the handheld games just tie-ins to the console games, and I feel like they lost some of their uniqueness there, some of the 
things that made them so good. Because I would say the two two of the best games of the 2000s for um, for Sonic were uh, Sonic Advance and Sonic Rush, which never got get ported. They've never been ported. They've never been re-released. As far as I know, those games are stuck on their original consoles. I mean, unless they've ended up on virtual console at some point and I've just never noticed. But as far as I know, you can only play these games on their um, original systems or on emulators. And unfortunately, we're not going to see any of the special stages in Sonic Advance because I'm playing on my uh, original save file from 2000 and whenever it was. But yeah, this is basically Carnival Night. Yeah, because we played um, we played Sonic Advance 2. The Sonic Advance 2, I think, was the very first game I ever did as part of Backlog Declog, which I need to bring back at some point. Um, and God, I game over on that game so much, and there was so much just brutal, unforgiving level design, just bottomless pits with blind drops, and the whole thing was just yeah. Ah, I remember this boss. This one's actually surprisingly easy. I think you just hide in one corner and wait for him to come out where you need him to. And then, yeah. Also, the other reason why Sonic Advance is uh, is amazing, you still get the Insta Shield from Sonic 3. You can still attack with the Insta Shield. This, this is my favorite move in all of Sonic, of 2D Sonic, is the Insta Shield and attacking with the Insta Shield. I don't know why, it's just so t satisfying. Damn it. There we go. Also, look at those explosions! I, su oh, I suppose it's all fuzzy on the... It's, it's all fuzzy on the actual... Um, the actual capture screen. That, I'm really, really annoyed by that. I wish there was a way to sharpen it without having an emulator. Because I don't know what I'm supposed to do in terms of a capture card. Because this is an old capture card that I'm using. Oh, this music is amazing, by the way. Really relaxing music, and welcome to the uh, the ice and snow level. Because just like in Sonic 3, the carnival level is followed by the ice level. Honestly, the soundtrack for this game is amazing. I mean, I feel like saying that about uh, saying that about a Sonic game is just like a given. But I am so gutted that the um, the soundtrack for this game is locked behind the uh, the GBA sound font because some of these games in particular, and one track in particular later on, which we'll get to, um, I feel like would do so so well if they were remixed. And to be fair, there are people on YouTube who have remixed and turned like some of these tracks into like Sonic Generations versions and things like that. But yeah. Speaking of Sonic music, that um, that Sonic 30th anniversary concert yesterday uh, was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I uh, I was in I, I was in my childhood for two hours and it was unbelievable. It was so like I was I was so emotional throughout the whole thing, and I really hope that they release the recordings as some kind of downloadable album because that was that was the best thing that Sega had ever done to celebrate this guy, honestly. Like, they know what people love about these games, and they went all in. All in. And it was... Oh my god, I just want to go and listen to the whole thing again. It was phenomenal. Um, hey, Compassion, how you doing? Are there any Sonic games you don't like the music for, or don't feel live up to the rest of the series? Um... I don't think there are any... Sonic games for which I would say the music is inherently bad. I think... If I had to pick one that I would say I'm not the biggest fan of the music outside of one or two levels, I'd probably say the original Sonic 1. Um, because... I mean, Green Hill Zone is alright, uh, but... Actually, Marble Zone's okay, 
Spring Yard Zone I'm not a fan of, uh, Labyrinth Zone I'm not a fan of, but that might just be because that's a zone as hell, and Scrap Brain Zone I'm not a fan of. Um, but Starlight Zone is incredible. But I think in terms of sort of a batting average, I would say probably Sonic 1 is the one that I think has the weakest soundtrack. I can't think of any that I would say are outright bad though. Um, there are certain aspects of certain games that I would say a section of it has bad music. Like I think the um, the classic Sonic stages in Sonic Forces, they tried to do a sort of MIDI style, a, a MIDI style sort of Mega Drive sound for the classic stage in Sonic Forces, and they just sound terrible. But the rest of that game's soundtrack is really good. So you know that's one aspect of one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do remember in this level, in Ice Mountain, I do remember there is one part where I was getting completely lost and not entirely sure where to go. This game does have a timeout feature on it, by the way, so if I get to 10 minutes, I will die. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go here. Can I go down here? Oh. Is that just it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. But yeah, like even on the in the anniversary concert last night, they did a they did a Game Gear medley, and I got to hear. I was literally talking about it a couple of weeks ago when we played Sonic One on Game Gear. That my favorite, one of my favorite tracks in the franchise, if not my favorite track in the franchise overall, is Bridge Zone from Sonic One on Game Gear, and I got to hear a full orchestral version of that. And then they gave us full orchestral versions of Sky Sanctuary, and oh my god, the medley of. Um, the two versions of Believe in Myself from the Sonic Adventure games, Tails' theme, that was incredible. Then we got a full orchestral... We got to hear Escape from the City and Live and Learn with full orchestral backing, which made it sound like it was one of Metallica's s &M gigs, and it was... Oh, there's just... There was so much! There was so much that was amazing. Oh my god. Just thinking about it, like, they did everything right. They did everything right. Like, even if you're just a casual Sonic fan, go and watch it. Even if you've just, like, one or two games. <sighs> if I if I had one thing, I would say, is that Crush 40 did not play What I'm Made Of, which is the best song in the entire franchise. But... Other than that, like, almost every single game in the series got some kind of nod. Actually, now that I think about it, that's not true. Because do you know what did get ignored in the um, in the anniversary concert? The advanced games, the rush games, all the handheld games, and I'm dead. Yeah, there's the first death of the run. Um, yeah, it's kind of a shame because again, these these titles just get they do not get the appreciation they deserve. these games, particularly like Sonic Advance 3 is also unique in the series because it's the only 2D game as far as I know to have a team mechanic. You know, obviously Sonic Heroes is the 3D one, but Sonic Advance 3 has you picking two characters to play as and each combination has its own special move that it can do. It's really deep in a way that you wouldn't expect from a 2D Sonic game. There's a lot of strategy that goes into it. And the levels are huge. Like we're talking like Sonic 3 and Knuckles levels, the levels are massive in Sonic Advance 3. And the games look gorgeous. Yeah. If you haven't played the Sonic Advance games, I highly, highly recommend it. They're so good. Ow. Yeah, it's less terrifying in the GBA sound for it, isn't it? And I need to jump on this thing and jump! Damn it! And I hit Robotnik rather than hit to the surface. I mean, just... Like, how good is that music? If there's one guarantee for um, for 2D Sonic games, it's that the the, uh, the wintry levels will always have incredible music. Whether it's Ice Cap, whether it's Ice Mountain, whether it's Diamond Dust in Sonic 3D. That was the other thing is they didn't acknowledge um, like the uh, 
they acknowledged Sonic CD with its two soundtracks when Crush 40 played Sonic Boot, but they didn't acknowledge the Mega Drive soundtrack for Sonic 3D. I think they played a little bit of um, of the Saturn version in um, in the there was a Sega Saturn medley, uh, but I don't think they acknowledged the the Mega Drive soundtrack for Sonic 3D, which is amazing. And Jun Tsunoue has reused a lot of it in um, in future games. But Diamond Dust on the Mega Drive version of uh, uh, Sonic. Okay, now he's out of rings. And he needs to get to the surface! There we go. Okay. I want to try and get through this game without a game over if I can. There we go. Um, what else was that? Oh, yeah! Something that I just realised uh, when I was watching the concert yesterday. Um, I saw, it was the first time I'd ever seen footage of Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn. Oh, by the way, so did you catch the name of that level there? This is Angel Island, which confused the hell out of me first time I played it, because I'm thinking this looks nothing like the Angel Island that I know from Sonic 3. But yeah, apparently this is Angel Island. This is just some uh, ancient temple that we're uh, that we're on. Uh, this is the this is the most annoying level in the game because this has a lot of bottomless pits and a uh, few places where you're not entirely sure if it is a bottomless pit or if it's where you're supposed to go. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be. I might die here quite a few times, but because I've already beaten the game, uh, if we do die here, we can always just skip it and just go to my favorite level. Um, so yeah, so it was the first time that I'd seen footage of Sonic Jam, and by which I mean uh, Sonic Jam, if you don't know, was a compilation on the Sega Saturn of the uh, the classic Mega Drive trilogy, um, but they also added in like a 3D open world hub area, uh, which was brand new to the game. It was the first time that you could play as Sonic in true three true true 3D and I'd only ever seen this in magazines I'd only ever seen screenshots where they were describing this open 3D space that you could uh, you could stand in and I think I've just lost that which I might need to because I'm going to die I think yeah I think you're supposed to flick off that um, and so um, I was desperate oh okay so you just do it anyway and then you'd lose your shield great um, and I was desperate to play uh, Sonic Jam to the point of begging my mum to buy me a Sega Saturn just so I could play Sonic Jam, which I repeat, wasn't a full game. This was an open 3D level in what was essentially a compilation of games that I already owned. And the Saturn, if you don't know, the Saturn was, and depending on how you look at it, still is the most expensive games console ever created. Uh, because when it was on sale, certainly in the UK, I'm going on UK prices here, but when it was on sale in the UK, it cost £450, um, which is the same price that a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X cost today. Um, I think it's the same price that a um, PS3 originally cost back in the day as well. Like, it's, I think it's still the record, the joint record, for the most expensive that a games console has ever cost, um, just for the console. And when you factor that this was 1995, 1996, uh, you know, with inflation, it's still the most expensive console ever made, probably. Um, well, un unless, you know, like Ataris and things back in the day were a lot more expensive, but in terms of sort of, you know, in, in my lifetime, certainly. Um, so, thankfully, my mum saw sense and didn't buy me a Sega Saturn. Um, and I've still never owned a Sega Saturn. I don't think I've ever even seen a Sega Saturn. Um, and I still have, to, th to this day, I have never played Sonic Jam. Um, in fact, I think the first post I ever made on a message board, I joined a Sonic message board when I was 12 years old, and the first thing I ever asked about was, do you think they could put Sonic Jam on GBA? So yeah, that's us coming full, full circle there. Uh, hey Matt, how are you doing? I hope you're winning, son. Uh, well, I'm on the worst level in Sonic Advance and I haven't died yet, so it's going well. Um, how you doing, mate? 
I'm still kind of reeling a bit from the anniversary concert last night for Sonic because it was everything I could have ever hoped for. Um, it was unbelievable. And I'm just talking about the things that I saw there last night and the first time I ever saw actual footage of Sonic Jam, um, which was interesting. I might have to see if I can find some way to play Sonic Jam just so I can finally sort of let... Um, let seven-year-old me, or eight-year-old me, whatever it was, finally, finally play the game that I wanted my mum to spend 500 quid on for what was essentially one level. But, uh, yeah. I think it's Act 2 where uh, this level starts to get properly, properly brutal. But we'll see. So far, not too bad. Also, yeah, listen. Original Sonic theme right there. Hardly appears in any video games these days, but that is the original Sonic the Hedgehog theme. And there's the death. We're still in the throes of clear in my apartment. I haven't got the chance to watch the symphony, but oh my god, you're gonna love it, mate. You're gonna absolutely love it. It's I like I am getting emotional just talking about it right now. The number of things that they did with that orchestra, the number of callbacks. Yeah, I had a couple of tears in my eyes, I'm not gonna lie. It was, uh. Hey, there we go. Right, we're off. This is the one and only bullshit level in the entirety of Sonic Advance. Um, like, just the fact that. Like, literally. Two weeks after we were, um, two weeks after we were playing Sonic 1 on Game Gear and I was talking about how much I loved Bridge Zone, and then they go and stick it in a medley, and I get to hear Bridge Zone with a full orchestra. I could, and, and that was like the third, the third song that they played, the third piece. I think they started with a Sonic 1 medley, then a Sonic 2 medley, and then they did a Sonic Game Gear medley. Um... Sadly, the Sonic 3 and Knuckles medley was approximately two songs. I think it was Angel Island Zone and Sky Sanctuary, and that was it. Um, which is understandable. But, um... Uh, like, I got Sky Sanctuary. Sky Sanctuary is one of my favourite tracks in the entire franchise. So I, hearing that with a full orchestra was enough. Um, it's... I mean... Not even just the finale. Like, I kept tweeting things and going, oh, imagine if they did this. Imagine if they did this. And then they would go and do it. I mean, I don't know how much you want me to talk about it because I kind of want you to... Um, I kind of want to save some of the surprises. Um, so I, I don't want to say too much, but all I'm saying is, like, I want that on a CD now. I want that to download and listen to until I die. That thing was... My, my entire childhood, my entire adolescence. That was the soundtrack to my. And I'm, de I'm dead. Yeah, I jumped up on the. Um, oh, Scottish penguin. Hello. Thank you very much for the follow. Um. Uh. Yeah, it was. Um. I was overwhelmed with how amazing it was. And it kind of sucks, because when Crush 40 performed, um, the band were in Japan, and Johnny, uh, the vocalist, was in America. You know, which is understandable, given travel restrictions and all that, so he kind of had to just sort of record his part separately. But, it was still... Oh. Yeah, I I'm not going to say anything, because I, I don't want to spoil too much, but I 100% will be watching the whole thing again. Okay, steady here. See, this is the level where I'm terrified of actually going too fast because I'm worried that I'm just gonna run straight into a bottomless pit. That's what I used to sing when I was five years old. Um, I think the last time we actually heard the original theme song for Sonic was um, 
uh, Generations, I believe. I think the title screen for Sonic Generations has, a, has an updated uh, version of it. But other than that, we don't really... We don't really hear it these days, which is a real shame. I mean, we heard it last night in the in the in the Sonic One medley. But oh, like even just even just talking about it, I'm just like, oh my god, that was amazing. Oh my god. Yeah. So I think it's difficult to say what good level design in a 2D Sonic game should look like, but I would say if if your level design includes things that make you not want to go fast, then it is poor level design. Like, you should not be afraid of um, wanting to just run really fast. Like, there can be bits with platforming, there can be bits with precise platforming, but you should always be stopped before it. Like, you should be able to just run like that. What's the, what's that? Am I going backwards? Was that, I think I might have been going backwards. Yeah, I was going backwards. Um, you should be able to just like, like you shouldn't be scared of doing this and thinking, am I going to land in the bottom of this pit by doing that? Okay. Thankfully, if we get through this level, we are into my fight, my favourite level in the entire game. Um, if you were here for the um, for the countdown, I was playing the music of it, or I was playing a remix of the music of it, which is uh, my favourite track. Um, my favourite track in the whole advanced series, if I'm honest. That's a really tight jump with a with a jump with a spikes there. Right. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go. And then you've got a bastard spring to send you back. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, if you're just joining us, apologies for the um, the quality of the stream. Um, I don't know why my capture card is looking so much worse for this than it has for previous ones. I am using composite cables. This is being played on a Game Boy player connected to a GameCube using... Oh! Okay, I guess we found the special stage. Special stage. I, um... I completely forgot that, um... I completely forgot that the special stage in this are uh, accessed by just finding a hidden spring somewhere in a level. Um... But yeah, so these kind of work like the um, like the Sonic 2 special stages. Just get as many rings as you can before the goal. And I was never very good at these. Also, trying to navigate this with a D-pad is quite hard. Because you're essentially navigating a 3D space. Not enough rings, yeah. Uh, hey MK, how you doing? Sonic Advance hype, yeah. We finally got there. But I've already got all seven Chaos Emeralds, so we will get the final stage. Sadly, one of the few downsides about Sonic Advance is it does not allow you to collect 50 rings and transform into, um, into Super Sonic. Uh, you only get an extra level at the end of the game. Which, which, which kind of sucks. So am, I, am I supposed to go down here? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Seems like it. Ah, finally! Here we are! So we're on Angel Island, and we're fighting Knuckles. Except it's not! It's... It's... Silver Knuckles! And, for some reason, he can fire missiles out of his chest that are bigger than he is. Where is he keeping them? 
Watch out, he's got the fighting gloves from Sonic Adventure. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Anyway. Oh! Imagine, do you, get, do you think you get killed if you get crushed by that? If you don't see it coming? Anyway. That was Angel Island. And now... Best act in the game. Hey, here it comes the raid. Oh, hello, Dan. Hello, friends. Just going to pause this a second just to say hello to everyone. Cornelius Talonthrust the first. Oh, did you finally get your name changed? Oh, I know. I know Deadpool takes a long time, but uh, yeah. Well, welcome Cornelius and friends. Um, how are we all doing? Hello, Tebow. Hello, Abney. Hello, Matt. Hello, uh, Hologro. Hello. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, we are playing on a um, on an original copy. This is Sonic the Hedgehog Advance. You do it for 100k. I don't think it costs that much. Um, I don't think you need to raise that many funds. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is the uh, a Sonic game that came out on the Game Boy Advance, um, which celebrated its 20th anniversary uh, this week. If you live in the UK. Um, so this is kind of a double anniversary celebration because obviously Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog turned 30 years old yesterday um, and uh, it's also 20 years since I bought my original Game Boy Advance um, and we have just reached my favourite level in this if you haven't seen these before these are basically you know more sort of classic Sonic games that no one knows about like if you loved the Mega Drive Sonic games uh, these are just basically more of the same um, they are absolutely superb and hardly anyone knows about them, but these were brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's a brief thing for someone who has a Patreon to see. <laughs> oh, that could be an incentive. Get Dan to change his name. Can't get it, but it has to be Cornelius Talonthrust. So is that like a D&D &D character or uh, what, what were you guys doing tonight? What was the uh, what was the game you were playing tonight? Was this, was this um, Dan's quiz? Was this... I, I, You'd think by now I would remember what you do on every day, but <laughs> you were naming a badger. Uh, sure, okay. Well, that was a black and white answer. Okay, come on, I've got to get this shield. Um, so basically, um, this is my favourite level in the entire game. This is the only one that has a timer that counts down rather than up. And the reason for that is that we are on a rocket that is lifting off, and so we have to try and get to the top of this level before the timer runs out so that we can catch Dr. Robotnik before he blasts off into space. Um, it also has the uh, the best music in the game, um, and uh, the, the reason for the quite poor quality is because I am playing this on my original Game Boy Advance cartridge uh, plugged into my GameCube, which I'm having to uh, capture through composite cables. Um, but this is original hardware. This is like this is basically. I like to think of this as being like um, listening to a classic album on the original vinyl. Sure, the quality is not going to be as good, but the nostalgia and the romanticism of the original has uh, has something to it. I think this track is an absolute banger. It is indeed. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Unfortunately. Uh, we've only got two and a half minutes to get to the end of the level and I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do it because I keep falling down. If you're going for masochism you could play the other traditional 2D Sonic on GBA Sonic Genesis. Yes, if you haven't, if you don't know that, um, Sega decided to re-release Sonic 1 from the Mega Drive on the Game Boy Advance and it was one of the, it's one of the worst uh, transfers, one of the worst ports in video game history. Everything about it is terrible, apparently. I haven't played it. But yeah, just go back from mobile search being dumb and this is the coolest stage in the game. This is indeed the coolest stage in the game. That is unanimous. I love that people are so, uh, so in agreement about that. Yes, this game has the, this level has the best music, the best mechanic. Um, admittedly, I'm getting a little nervous now of the, uh, of the, of the timer, but that just means we get to do it twice. Um, so what's going on here? Like, do I... I feel like I keep going in circles. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, right. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, okay, and then we jump up here. Right, okay. Oh, hang on. 
Hopefully you recognize this tune. One of the other things they got right in this game, having the tr having the original Sonic theme as the invincibility music. Okay, got less than a minute to get to the top, and that platform's gonna annoy me. Oh, just made it. So yeah, the sprite artwork in this uh, in this game, like with a lot of um, uh, Game Boy Advance games, is just amazing. Okay, I think this is us. Okay, so we've got up 30 seconds before the uh, thing is going. Is, is the timer going to reset now? Yes. Okay, so we've got another five minutes. Okay, that that makes me feel a little better. Na, 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 na. So, uh, if any of you guys that have just joined are interested, uh, because this is the week of Sonic the Hedgehog's 30th anniversary, tomorrow night, um, I will be getting out my original Mega Drive from 1994 with my original cartridges, and we are going to do a marathon of all three of the classic Sonic games. I will be trying to beat them all as fast as I can. Um, I did it once last spring, and it, caught, it took me about five to six hours, I would say. Um, because in, in Sonic 1 and Sonic 3, I was going for all Chaos Emeralds as well, which adds a fair a bit to the time. Um, so, we'll have to see how long that takes, but that should be good fun. I haven't played the classic games in a long time. Um, but I love getting out my original 27-year-old uh, console and playing the originals. And you'll also get to see... Um, you also get to see the slowed down original version of Sonic 1 if you haven't seen that before because the original Mega Drive version of Sonic 1, uh, the European version, is 5 sixths the speed of every other version that's ever been made. But yeah, wait, I think we can jump up through that gap if I'm getting this right. Come on, come on. Yeah. I overshot it and undershot it. There we go. Just made it. Oh, damn it. I am kind of sad that the um, the uh, 30th anniversary concert that they had yesterday didn't have any nods to the Sonic Advance levels. But otherwise, if, guys, if you haven't seen um, yesterday, I mean, I was tweeting about it incessantly, but... Um, Yesterday, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sega put on a full orchestral, uh, a full orchestral concert featuring orchestral versions of classic music tracks from pretty much every major game in the Sonic franchise. Because the thing that Sonic has always had, even when the quality of the games has gone up and down, the one thing that Sonic has always had has been phenomenal music. And so they just went all in on that, and they took uh, they took all of our favourite tracks from the past 30 years, and they made a full a full a full orchestra play them, and they were incredible. And then they had a, a rock concert uh, to do all of the uh, the um, the vocal tracks from the games, and the whole thing like genuinely got me really emotional because that was basically my childhood and my my adolescence, my youth in a single night. And I was singing along so loud in this room, honestly, I do, did not care. And look, we're in space now! Space! Space, space, I wanna be in space. Um, and uh, genu yeah, genuinely, I was, I was singing my ass off. I was going full falsetto on all the tracks. I felt like I was 14 again. It was incredible. Just, Pretty much perfect. Like, I don't think they did a single thing wrong on it. Like, even even tracks that... E even from games that no one really cares about. Like, Sonic Lost World. Like, they did a medley of that. And I personally... I'm a fan of Sonic Lost World. I think it's a good game. Um, and I think the music in it is really good. And there is one standout track in Sonic Lost World called Sea Bottom Segway, which if you haven't heard it, um, it's one of the most relaxing, sort of chill-out tracks you'll ever hear. Like, it is top of my, sort of, study slash working from home playlist. It is, it's just the, the most chill-out track you'll ever hear. And I'm sitting there, listening to them play 
the Sonic Lost World medley and thinking, are they going to play Sea Bottom Segway? I don't know if many people know about Sea Bottom Segway. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the best track in the game, but I don't know if they're aware of it. And what did they finish with? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, the sped up theme is kind of messing with me. Um, yeah, they finished with a beautiful string quartet version of the best track in Sonic Lost World. And, and everything that I tweeted, everything that I was tweeting about, because I was live tweeting the whole thing and I'm going, I wonder if they'll do this. Imagine if they did this, it would be the coolest thing ever if they did this. And every single thing that they that I said, I wish they would do this, they did. They absolutely did. Oh my god. Well, that's not fair. Oh, bit of frame rate slow down there. That's interesting. I've not seen that before. So there's the platform. Come back here. Come back here. Come back here, you. Yeah, I think this is near the end of the stage. This is a long stage. Ow. Oh, it's one of these jumps. These are awful. You've got to run up the side and jump before you hit the spring. And hope that the pla Yeah, that's a really narrow jump that they expect you to make there. Oh, okay. Fans. Ah, this is the end of the level. Better or worse than Akuma's Sweatshop Space Station? Um, well, I haven't died in um, this yet. <laughs> and I haven't had a friend kill me in the last second either. So this is Cosmic Angel. This is the inside of Eggman's spaceship. Da -da 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 -da. Very colourful. And this is kind of a jazzed up remix of the um, of the Egg Rocket theme that we just heard. I, I prefer the slowed down, more chill version of Act 1, but this is still really good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like I say, it's just such a shame that these tracks are on the GBA, in the GBA sound font, because these could do with a high-definition remaster. It's kind of the same way I feel about the Shovel Knight soundtrack, if I'm honest. Like, I think the so Shovel Knight soundtrack is incredible, I just find the 8-bit style of music just so abrasive, so I can't actively listen to it. It's a shame. I feel like I, I would listen to these so much if someone remade them in, like, a uh, high-definition remastered with actual sort of high-quality MIDI instruments, or, or with a full orchestra. But instead, they're stuck in the format that they, uh, they were originally made in. YouTube remix artists have you covered? Yes, um, there are there are incredible artists out there. Um, just off the top of my head, I think Turret3571 is the name of one. Um, Nico CW is the name of another. Um, and they take classic... Um... Oh, we found another special stage! Alright. Well, we already have all seven Chaos Emeralds, but we'll see how we do here. Um, yeah, there are uh, remix artists on YouTube that take old um, old musical tracks from the Sonic games uh, that never got a, uh, like a, an updated thing. They, they call them Generations versions because they do like classic and modern covers of them. Um, and they've done things like they've done the Game Gear games. They've, they've done Bridge Zone, which I was really happy to see. And uh, yeah, they take... Uh, they do sort of high quality remixes of them, which are which are really, really good. And yeah, it's probably the closest we're ever going to get to, to official versions of those uh, those ones, unless they manage to convince um, unless they manage to convince T Lopez and do and um, uh, Jun Sonoe to do more tracks, because they did a brilliant cover of um, Underground Zone from Sonic Two Game Gear uh, recently, and they also did. Um, uh, what else did they do? They did Station. They did Station Square from Sonic Adventure One. 
They did Can You Feel the Sunshine, which I think T. Lopes did with his sister on vocals, I think it was. Um, really cool sort of laid back version of that. And then um, they did, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the opening track from Sonic 4. Um, and oh, Sonic 4, again, Sonic 4 is not a good game, but the music in it is amazing. I think it's Sunset Park, I want to say. But uh, the GB Sound card is so bad, every single GB Sound card is a missed opportunity. Mostly they do the OST very well, often do Atmosphere, like Metroid Fusion. You really get a sound that's really good in the GB Sound card, like Mega Man Battle. Final Fantasy 3, first played on the DS, but the CD soundtrack takes it back to the SNES quality. Yeah, it's kind of um when you've got uh when you've got tracks that are on multiple formats, or you've got games that are on multiple formats rather, because I'm thinking of um like there's a couple of brilliant tracks. Oh, I'm dead. Um there's a couple of brilliant tracks from Earthworm Gym 2. And Earthworm Gym 2 got a release on PlayStation 1, I believe. And so you've got sort of, but it also came out on like Atari and Mega Drive and SNES and a few other things. So there are different quality versions of uh, of those tracks. And trying to find a version that actually is like the high quality PlayStation One version is tricky. But yeah. More gravity shenanigans, because everyone loves a good gravity shenanigans level in um, in Sonic. Um, although I, I think it does work better in um, <laughs> I do think it works better in 2D than it does in 3D. You know, I don't know how many people are a fan of Crazy Gadget from um, from Sonic Adventure 2, but I suspect it's not that many. Um, of course, then they just went gravity shenanigans mad in um, Sonic Lost World, of course. So this is the um, the last quote unquote uh, normal level in the game. After this, it's uh, it's a series of uh, boss levels. And if you've played any of the uh, any of the Sonic Mega Drive games, you might recognise a couple of the bosses coming up. But first, we've got to get through this one. I mean, I I, st I like Crazy Gadget. I think that the um I think that the uh, the the cube maze at the end. Um, I think that's quite fun actually you know it's a, it's a little janky at times and I'm gonna die here yeah um, hey David how you doing nice uh, nice new username there <laughs> is that your original account or did you create a new twitch account for that but uh, yeah cool digital David very cool um, uh, what was I gonna what was I saying um, yeah, the, uh, the the cube section in Crazy Gadget, I loved how colourful it was, because there wasn't that many places in Sonic Adventure that were that sort of colour, colourful, with the purples and the... the purples and the greens and everything like that, you know? Most, most places were sort of all one colour, whether it was grey in the city or it was green in the forest or orange in the pyramid. And then you got to the, um, you got to the space levels and all the space levels were, you know, spaceshipy. that make me analog David um. <laughs> and that I've been switched off since 1999 is that what you're saying <laughs> and that I'm delightfully retro but no one actually wants to use me for anything useful oh god this is a 12 hit boss they're exactly in only two Davids on Twitch. No, there can be only one! So yeah, we're on three lives. I've got three lives to beat this boss. Who... I remember this boss taking me quite a while. What is your surname out of your username? Uh, yeah, I mean, who would be stupid enough to put their surname in their username, right? I mean, that would be a really stupid thing to do. You're basically doxing yourself there, aren't you? Just gonna spring back and forth here while, uh... Um, I'm telling you right now, Opera GX is amazing. Hey, Rez, how you doing? 
What's uh, what's Opera GX? I'm uh, I don't know what Opera GX is. Is it like um is it a version of F Zero GX where Captain Falcon sings uh sings Lab OM? And I've just lost all the rings that I collected. Oh, it's a browser. Okay. But uh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I immediately lose all my rings. This is this is a really tricky boss because you have to you have to jump right. You have to jump close enough to him to get him to flip, while also avoiding the things that he keeps sending your way. While also you have to force him down. You have to force the things down far enough to get him to flip, while also avoiding the things that he like fires out. Sometimes it's impossible, and and the, the rings don't bounce is the other thing. So if you don't catch them and they fall, they're just gone. Oh wow! I forgot that you could do that. Holy crap! I forgot. I completely forgot that that was a move in this. If you press right in the air twice, okay. He speeds up. Browser or Tentors of Chrome and Lost Better. Yeah, you're kind of bringing it up quite randomly. Are you getting paid to advertise them or something? Yeah, hang on. Let me get to a safe bit and I can I can show you this. Yeah, if you press... I don't know what this is for. I think it's... Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the point of this move is, but if you press right twice in a row in the air... You do a little... A little dash like that. Yeah. So yeah, is um because the only I've only ever heard of Opera being used. The, the only place I've ever used Opera in my life, the browser, was um uh, was on the Wii. It was it was the browser of choice on the Wii. Oddly enough, um, I mean it worked well enough on there. You know, I used to use it every morning to check the um uh, the dojo updates for Smash Brothers Brawl. That was where I found out for the first time that um Sonic was going to be in Super Smash Brothers. Was on the um that's mean. Every time, that's mean. Um, yeah, the first time that I ever found out Sonic was going to be in Super Smash Bros. was via the Wii browser. You just watched the Sonic movie yesterday. You loved it. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I always, I love when people like the Sonic movie. I think it is a decent movie. I think it is, it is aimed at children. Um, but I don't think there's anything necessarily bad in it. You know, there, are, there are a lot of people that like to. In terms of, it, it's really, really good for a video game movie. And much like, <laughs> technically, I, I love this stat because it's really weird. If you go on Wikipedia, um, if you go on Wikipedia and look at the list of highest grossing superhero films, um, it's really weird because over, over the past few years, you've got things like you've got uh, Avengers, Avengers, and then it's just, it's Marvel, 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 and then 2020, the highest grossing superhero movie, technically, is Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, but it kind of makes sense because I think the reason why some people maybe found it so... Oh, I, I, yeah, I forgot that there's actually... Yeah, that's the thing. You're jumping into a void not knowing if there's a platform down there or not. That's, that's pure level design, unfortunately. Um, the thing with that is that... Um, it kind of was a superhero movie in the sense that it was an origin story. Like, I think a lot of people found it a bit bland and a bit, um, a bit, uh, predictable because it's a superhero movie origin story, and at this point we've seen dozens and dozens of them. Um, it's basically a Robotnik origin story if you think about it. Uh, because Sonic's still the same person, really, that he was at the beginning of the film. Um, but because... Much like all the superhero franchises, there is a sense of, right, now they've got the origin story out of the way, they can start doing the things that everyone loves, and they can start getting into the proper stuff that everyone wants to see. So I am really hopeful that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is going to be incredible. Because I think if they get a bit more budget, which I'm hoping that the um the success, the, the, the quote-unquote success, because, you know, it didn't do great numbers at the box office, but in terms of 2020, it did relatively all right. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that with a bit more budget... There we go, yes! 
Um, I'm really hoping that the second film will be more closer to the uh, closer to the um, originals. The problem is, of course, that because we did have Infinity War only three years ago, if they bring in uh, if they bring in the Chaos Emeralds, people are just going to go, well, these are just rip-offs of the Infinity Stones. Despite the fact that I think they both came out... Oh, hang on, yeah. So, those of you that played the original Sonic the Hedgehog Mega Drive games, you may recognise the next couple of bosses. Also, we have one life here, but it's alright because if we die, we game over. I've got a level select so we can just get back to the final zone. So that was, uh, that was the first boss was Sonic 1. How many of you played Sonic 2 as a kid? I can't decide if this is my favourite boss theme. Uh, or my, my favourite normal boss theme, because Sonic 3's is... Uh... Is it Sonic 3's or is it Sonic and Knuckles? That's really, really good. That's really, really good. I think that's the Sonic and Knuckles boss theme. Um, and this is the one. This is the one that caused me so much trouble as a kid. Because this is random. What he does for each of these... It's just kind of random which one comes out. So you just kind of have to hope that you don't get hit by the one that you're looking for. In the comics, the Infinity Gems are a lot different than holding the Chaos Emeralds, but they're more similar to the Dragon Balls. Yeah, I, I, I hear that there's a lot of stuff, sort of... I know I've heard people talk about how Super Sonic is just basically Super Saiyan, and also I didn't realise that Dragon Ball Z was that old. Like, I thought Dragon Ball Z came around in sort of the mid-90s, like a lot of cartoons. Or a lot of, um, like, I, I, I thought it was around the same age as the Pokemon anime, but apparently it's a lot, lot older than that. Um, but yeah, my, my worry is that, you know, it's just, it's a set of magical, all-powerful gems. And yeah, I'm, I'm worried that audiences are just going to go, well, you've just, you've just ripped off an idea. But yeah. Anyway, minus speed at first time. So, that's surprising. Is that the end of it though, or is there another boss? No, okay. Super Series that wasn't made by the... had a SNES game. Wow, oh, okay. And here we go. Just took forever to come to the West. Yeah, like a lot of things, I imagine. So this is the Moon Zone. So this is your classic, sort of, inspired by Doomsday, this is your classic, uh, secret end of level boss. Um, weirdly, uh, unlike every other 2D Sonic game, uh, A and B do, A and B do different things in this, so you jump with A and you attack with B, which is really strange and really hard to get used to. Also, this might, take me, this might take me quite a few tries, because I'm not entirely sure how you even hit him. Okay, there's one hit. Kind of reminds me of a Metroid boss, in a way. Kind of reminds me a little bit of um, of the... Is it the Mother Brain fight from uh, Super Metroid? Looks a bit like that. Or maybe it's... um it, No, it might be... It might be from Rocket Knight Adventures I'm thinking of, actually. And we're dead. So it seems like, I haven't played this in a long time, but it seems like there are just no rings in this level. So you just, you have a 50 second time limit to beat this guy. Oh no, there are rings. Okay, I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. Okay. Oh, and hey, look at that frame rate slow down. That's, uh... Look at that frame rate slow down that's actually giving us a bit of time to, to dodge and to collect. That's actually working out quite well in our favour. Derivatives all the way down. That's just, that's just that's calculus right there. I 
I don't think that calling something derivative is necessarily a bad thing. Unless it's derivative of itself. Like, I think, um... I think people complained a lot that the Force Awakens was derivative of A New Hope, and I think that's very... I think that's very valid. When it's, you know, part of the same thing. But to say something is derivative of something else... I mean, yeah. I mean, Sonic doesn't escape that. I mean, there's a giant spherical space station in this called the Death Egg. You know, that's... You know, the Star Wars lawyers would have a field day with that. Anyway, that's Sonic Advance. Bayonetta 2 is derivative of itself. I don't know if it, it... Does that count as derivative of itself? It's just a sequel with the same mechanics? I don't know. It's 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 different for every every franchise. But hey, that was Sonic Advance. Um, that was actually that went that went faster than I was expecting, honestly. Um, even with the hours delay that we had in starting the stream. But look, it even has a sequence of. Like, this is, this is like the spiritual successor to the classic games. Because look, it even has a sequence of Tails rescuing Sonic in the sky in sepia, in like black and white sepia, smaller, smaller squares. Again, would you call that derivative of the trilogy or would you call it a, would you call it a tribute? It was. So, we did actually finish that a lot quicker than I was expecting. Um, I was expecting to have a lot more trouble with Sonic Advance than I thought. So, I think, since we've got some time to kill, I might go through and show you some Amy gameplay. Uh, because this is one of the few games in the franchise where Amy Rose is playable. And uh, that's why I feel like this is a, the proper sequel to Sonic 3 Knuckles, because they added in another character. Um, and I'm still, I'm still, I'm still really annoyed that, um, uh, I'm still really annoyed that Sonic Mania didn't get Amy in it, Amy in it. Um, like, that game has five dudes and no, five dudes and no girls. Like, that's not, that's not a gender balance. Oh, and Amy fans have been crying out for, for her to have a decent, playable game for years. Also, yeah, um, this game has uh, Amy's personality as girl. <laughs> Sadly, it's, it's a shame that after, you know, 29 years or whatever it is, that's still true. Ha <laughs> ha the live fingers on brothers and one of the contestants plucked out of the audience sounded awfully familiar. Yeah, that was me. That was me. Um, I went. I went along. I, I got. I've been to a few of the uh, the live fingers on brothers things, and um, uh, yeah, I sat in the front row and uh, I got picked out. Um, so yeah, that was me. Um, partly because no one else in the audience wanted to participate, and I felt bad for um, for. Lucy and Jenny that they were up there and no one else was saying yes so uh, so yeah I, uh, <laughs> it's, it was kind of weird because I went from uh, I got interviewed fingers on buzzers and then the following year I was I was a guest a, like a live guest on it out of the blue which was uh, it was really cool though that was uh, that was awesome um, oh I, I missed I missed those guys that was uh, those were great live shows I really hope that we get to I get to go to one again Ames personality is the quote Sonic Battle Girl Street. I'm I'm so I'm so sad that I've missed all the Sonic Battle streams so far. It's just they've they've just been on too late for me. Um, I've been really really like just I I've needed sleep the last couple of weeks, so I've just I've not even yeah. I gotta sit down and watch Boom someday. Yeah, me too. Apparently, Amy Rose in Sonic Boom, the cartoon, is. Like, got really, really good characterization. And it's it's in my Netflix list. Like, it's on Netflix, at least in this country. Um, 
And the, yeah, so from what I hear, the writing is amazing. I just need to sit down and actually watch the damn thing. Um, anyway, yeah. So, the one thing... Uh, we'll, we'll start as Amy, and we'll see how far we get. Um, well, basically, I think we might as well go until Smash Your Pieces are ready to go with um, with the final part of their Animal Crossing uh, broadcast. Um, you highly recommend it for Sonic fans. Okay. Because, yeah, that was the thing that kind of put me off, is, you know, it's a, it's another version of Sonic in another universe, and I wasn't sure how much I'd actually appreciate it. As much as, like, Sonic X and that, where they actually try and do canon stuff from the games. Um, but, yeah. So... The one thing about Amy is that she does not roll. She crouches. Um, so this kind of put me off playing as her as a kid, because if you try and get some speed up and then try and get into a roll, she just crouches and just stops dead. So you've really got to... It's kind of like playing the game on hard mode, because you have to completely relearn how to how to play the game. She, she has a hammer, of course, like Amy's... Uh, she loves a good hammering, does Amy. Amy absolutely loves a good hammering. Um, but yeah, it just it stops dead, completely dead. And you will get into a roll. You'll, you'll you'll get into like a you'll get into the zone. You know, no pun intended. And you'll get going. You'll get you'll get momentum. You'll be bouncing off springs left and right. And then you'll think, okay, I'll just I'll uh, I'll start rolling for some extra momentum. And then you just you just stop. But yeah, can, can she grind actually? Can she can she grind on the rails? Let's try that. I, can, I don't know if she can. I don't know if that's like a, a Sonic only thing. Because each of the four characters as well in this, you can you can still kind of speed boost. Like if you if you crouch and jump, she does this kind of weird uh, weird sort of long jump thing, like Mario. Uh, can she grind? Yes, yeah, she. Oh oh. She's doing what Big the Cat did in Sonic Heroes. She is crotch grinding. Oh no. Oh. Oh, that's going to leave a burn in the morning. Oh. She is going to be raw. She is going to be raw. Oh. Well, now we know where Big learned it in Sonic Heroes. Because, of course, Amy and Big are on the same team in Sonic Heroes. And Amy taught Big how to crotch grind. So, yeah. Can't believe this game was rated uh, suitable for all ages when there's, like, obvious crotch grinding going on. So, yeah. Um, the other, uh, the other cool thing that not everyone knows about with Amy's gameplay. Uh, if I, I need to find a spring first. So normally, you jump on a spring, it puts you in the air. But if you whack it with a hammer, yeah, it didn't work because there was a ceiling in the way. I need to find a free one. I need to find a free spring. Also, yeah, she, she has a sort of, uh, kind of like Kirby's side B in uh, Smash Brothers. She has a sort of uh, spinning hammer thing. Like, the ins the instinct every time I do this is to hit the spring and then, uh, and then hold down to roll into a ball to get as much momentum as possible. But if you do that, like, that's a red spring. That sends them flying off at like 100 miles an hour. Nothing. Nothing. You never press down in this. Can she whack a hammer? Can she whack a spring sideways? No. Okay, so it's just... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so um, normally it takes me about a minute to beat that act. It took me three and a half there. Why was... Like, this is why the advanced games are so good. Because Especially because in, in, in Sonic Advance 2, they add in Cream as a new character. So you have five playable characters in this game. All of which have different abilities. And then in Sonic Advance 3, you, they all team up and they all get uh, different abilities in that as well. So yeah, so that's uh, that's the Yellow Spring. And then with the, with the hammer... 
Again, I picked a really bad example there because there was no frame of reference for how high she was going. I need to find one near a wall or something. Walk on trampolines? Probably not. Do we want to see it again? Oh, I didn't even press a button that time. She just landed on it. I mean, if I was hurt, I would go slowly as well. She has a backwards animation. Apparently she does, yeah. Honestly, the sprite work in this game is incredible. I think the sprite work in this game is better than in Sonic Mania's, and I think the sprite work in Sonic, Sonic Mania is unbelievable. Like, I know in, um, in the in the Dr. Mario episode of Smash to Pieces, uh, the gang were talking about how uh, with the advent of 3D graphics, sprite artwork kind of kind of died a death for a, for a while. Certainly for a decade or so, until indies came around. But, um, but it was alive and kicking on the GBA for a long time. It was the DS that kind of, kind of killed off sprite work. But, I mean, the sprite work in these are just incredible. She have the ability to launch herself while running, am I thinking of the later ones? No. If you um if you hit the B button while she's running, she stops and just whacks in front of her. That might be um might be Sonic Advance 2 you're thinking of. Possibly Sonic Advance 3. I really need to give Sonic Advance 3 a go at some point sometime. Because I think those these games have so many ideas in them. DS has some great sprite work too on the Pokemon side of things. Oh right! Actually, yeah, now that I think about it... Oh, well... <laughs> Robotnik had the last laugh because he just crushed her with his capsule. Um, yeah, now that I think about it, Heart Gold. I remember playing Heart Gold and that had some incredible sprite work. Um, I guess I'm just used to... I was thinking of like Sonic Rush where it all moved into sort of 3D polygons. Didn't really see the kind of SNK quality sprites. Yeah... I'm not saying that they were the best around, but I think they were just... I, ju I just think these are incredible. Did SNK do any um, any GBA games? Because I imagine that SNK and the GBA would have, a, would have a great time. And that's a lot of three-letter acronyms. Yeah, see, that's the thing, Deke, is that I... I mean, I mentioned this when I played Pokemon Snap, but... The last uh, mainline Pokemon game I played was Ruby on the Game Boy Advance. Um, I then played Heart Gold on the DS, and that was it. So I never played Black or um, Diamond or any of those ones. They went the best round, but nothing was going to keep them down. No, because if we hold down on this, Amy just stops dead. She'll no longer be the best around because she'll just time out. Yeah, give us, give us a, give us a Sonic Advance collection, you cowards. Give us a Sonic Advance collection. I was going to say, do I, I was just thinking, do I want, like, a Sonic Advance remaster? Do I want, like, Sonic Advance to be done, a Sonic Advance trilogy in the style of Sonic Mania? Or do I want them to preserve the, preserve the sprite animation? And I think I just want them to preserve the sprite animation. Even if the level design could do with a bit of a tune-up in, um, in Sonic Advance 2 in particular. See, she can curl into a ball there! <laughs> I love her running animation. Ah! I'm trying to fly, but I can't! So yeah, we'll just we'll play through Amy's story until um, until Smash to Pieces are ready to go, and then we'll raid them, shall we? Because I got nowhere to be. There's no football on tonight. I haven't. I, I don't know if I've actually beaten Sonic Fans as Amy since the game came out. I wonder if the reason why um, 
why Amy doesn't roll into a ball is because she's wearing a dress. Having said that, Sonic Tails and Knuckles are all naked. So... Maybe Amy's superpower is modesty. Ah, here we go, hang on. No, damn it, this is... You got your Wii streaming working. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> Maybe Amy's superpower is modesty, yes! Ah, oh, I completely forgot about the quotes. Um, just getting any getting any sort of streaming setup working is an achievement. Like that's really impressive. Because speaking as speaking from experience of someone who had to delay the start of my stream an hour tonight because I tried plugging my GameCube into my computer and it just would not recognize it. Despite the fact that using the same capture card, I plugged my Wii into the computer last Sunday and it worked first time. So anytime you can get, like, a console to be captured and it actually works and it does what you want it to, I think, like, that deserves a medal. Need to go buy a where the shops are open. All right, well, thanks again for the raid, Dan. Always appreciate it. Um, <laughs> take care, Cornelius. Don't worry, you'll get that deep pool money soon. All right. Streaming is totally... GDQ's... Yeah. That's a really good point, actually. Particularly particularly in the pandemic era. Like, the fact that GDQ works... Ow. Near flawlessly. You know, sometimes they have some tech issues occasionally because people obviously bring their own equipment. But not only when it's all in one room and they have like miles and miles of black spaghetti to plug in. But when everyone is in their own rooms, in their own homes, in different, not just different area, parts of the country, different parts of the world. Like, you know, like the last few, um, the last few, uh, the last few GDQs, most of them have had uh, Argic in, who if you don't know Argic, he's a very good uh, Sonic speedrunner. And uh, he's uh, he's Scottish, and he does it from his home in Scotland. And if it hadn't been for sort of online-only GDQ, he would never have been involved in a, in a GDQ, you know? But the fact that they can make it all work, and they can make it all sync up, and, you know, between all the, the capturing and the donations and uh, everything like that, it's one of the biggest sort of technical achievements I've seen on the internet, if I'm honest. The only and only GDQs are probably a lot easier to run. I mean, in some ways possibly, but I feel like if you're trying to... If someone's stuff is not working, and the tech heads at GDQ aren't there to physically look at the problem and figure out what's happening, and they're just trying to give instructions to um, to someone who's at the other end of, you know, a Discord call thousands of miles away. I imagine it's probably a lot trickier. trickier. I think having everything all in one central location probably makes things a lot simpler in terms of, you know, changeover and things like that. But even in terms of like getting all the stream layouts and everything set up, you know? Did they have days of single runs to get passed off to guests that couldn't make it in person? I think about that for a lot of things that went online, you know? Like, um, like, uh, there are podcasts that I listen to and sort of like, um, I don't know if any of you know, um, Richard Herring, uh, the, uh, the British comedian. Obviously, obviously the Brits will, but, um, uh, he does a comedy podcast in the UK where he interviews lots of different people, usually comedians. Um, and he took it online and started running it. It used to be like a regular thing at a theatre in London. Um, every few weeks he'd have an interview with a, with a comedian and he'd have a live audience. Well, when the pandemic hit, he moved on to Twitch and he started doing the entire thing on Twitch with a virtual audience. 
and because it was on Twitch with a virtual audience, he was able to interview comedians from America, Australia, just all over the world. And what, and it's now started going back to the live shows in London again, and obviously the international comedians are going to miss out on that, and people have been asking him, will you do any more digital stuff? And I don't know what the answer is. Most speedrunners are already streamers, so really you just need to do your regular thing with a different layout. In person, you're constantly taking the entire thing apart and putting it back together every run. Yeah, I, I suppose if it's um, if your setup's all ready to go, I guess so. And I guess I suppose if um, hmm. yeah, I guess if you're if you're speed running in your own home and you're streaming in your own home, you know, you know your own setup instead of taking your console or your game or whatever it is. Yeah, that's that's. I'm not entirely sure if that's possible, as Amy. Hang on, let me try something. No, so Amy doesn't have the da the air dash, so I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to do that better, Amy. People need to pay attention to ESA. ESA just comes and goes. My friends love GDQ, don't even notice. I, I have to confess that I have never watched ESA. Um, I know that it I know that it exists, I know it's a thing, it just it never sort of it's never in my consciousness in the same way that GDQ is, you know. I couldn't even tell you what times of year it's on. But yeah, I probably do need to um, to keep an eye on that, Espe especially if it's um, especially if they if they host it in London or something like that, because I could actually go to it then. I think it do they not host it in like um, I think it's been in Sweden a couple of times or it's been in uh, France maybe. I, I genuinely don't know so much. But I suppose yeah, if um, if it's if, if if you're a streamer and you're in your own house with your own setup, then it's probably a lot more comfortable for you than doing it in an unfamiliar place, possibly in an unfamiliar country. So yeah, this part here, I'm really confused as to how you're supposed to do this as Amy. ESA is also a bit more willing to get weird. They did D&D &D speedrun ones. Wow. I mean, GDQ does occasional weird stuff. I still think the, um, like, it, they, ha they sometimes have, like, the Guitar Hero speedruns or the Tetris speedruns or something like that. So yeah, how the hell am I supposed to do this as Amy? Do I, do I jump up here? Yeah, playing as Amy is basically hard mode, because you're playing a game where... Yeah, she, ha she has a long jump, but she doesn't really have... Weird, weird. if I got a way to do VR splits because Half-Life Alex was one of the best. Really? Amy's hard mode in the sense you have to relearn the whole game. Yes. So when you say uh, Half-Life Alex was one of the best you've ever seen, was that at a GDQ or was that... Because um... I've never seen any of Half-Life Alex. Uh, partly because I still have it in my own deluded mind that someday I might actually finally play Half-Life 2. And so I don't I haven't watched any Half-Life Alex in case it contains spoilers for Half-Life 2. I was hoping... Like, I tried really hard when I first got an Xbox 360 I tried really hard to find a copy of the orange box but I couldn't find anything online I couldn't find any copies of the orange box online so I still have never played Half-Life 2 despite loving the hell out of Half-Life 1 it was at the first online GDQ okay I must have missed that Oh wow, and because Amy doesn't crouch into a ball, you can't duck this in the same way that Sonic Tails and Knuckles can. Amy doesn't really crouch, she curtsies. 
The orange box is on Steam. Yeah, but I was looking for the console version because, again, my PC is not the best, and I'm not entirely sure if it could run Half-Life 2. Like, I don't know if my, if my PC could run Portal. I'm not sure if it could run Half-Life 2 either. Hey, look at that! I managed to dodge out of the way this time. Okay, hang on, I've got a message I need to reply to. Oh crap! Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Amy! <laughs> That's really cool actually, I've never noticed that before. If you- if they have an idle animation where they wave- they wave at you to wake up. Let's have a look at that again. Hello? Hello? Oh my god! the sprite work in this game. There was so much emotion there. That went through so many things. I wonder if they all do that. I've never, never noticed that before. I guess because, you know, back when I first got this in 2002, 2003, whatever it was, um, I wasn't stopping to check on WhatsApp messages. Uh, but... I mean, it's, it's not the first time uh, that, uh, that they've broken the fourth wall. Uh, like, like, Sonic standing and tapping his foot as an idle animation staring at the screen is a classic trope of, uh, of uh, 2D Sonic games. But, um, I've never seen that much go into it. Normally, it's just they stop, go from uh, they go from standing still to idle animation, and it's just that. It's just one switch. But that... That animation from Amy there went through all the stages of impatience. Like, I've never... I don't think I've seen any other game... Certainly not any other Sonic game do that. That's incredible. As if I didn't need another reason to love this game so much. Now we've got to go in with the other three characters and see what they do. I'm not entirely sure if it beats uh, the, what, the thing that happens in Sonic CD. If you don't know what happens in Sonic CD, if you um, if you stand completely still, am I just dead here? Yeah, okay. If you stand completely still with Sonic for I think it's exactly three minutes or it's two minutes fifty-eight seconds or something like that, uh, he will he will. He will, he will be standing there with his foot tapping, looking at the screen. And then he will say, after three minutes of you pressing no buttons and doing nothing, he will just he will look at the screen and go, I'm out of here, and then he will jump off the screen, and it's game over. That is your game over. And I'm not entirely sure who the voice of Sonic is in that, but that is Sonic's first ever vocal line in a game. It's him going, I'm out of here, in an easter egg. But it's such a brilliant little touch that, you know, hardly anyone would ever see. Hardly any players are ever going to see. So we'll have to see what the other ones, the rest of them do now, because they, again... I'm so happy I got that text message. So that we could see that. Oh, wow, so she can bounce off item boxes too. Down here? Yeah. This was the part that confused me. Okay. So 
So yeah, there are, there are a few games that have a good um, good examples of breaking the fourth wall. But um, uh, I forgot how good the sprite work is in this game. Same with the music. I need to go and look at some of those high quality remixes. I might spend this weekend just. Because uh, I. Just. Just going through just dozens and dozens of those. Um, those remixes on YouTube because. Be between so Sonic 1 on Game Gear from a couple of weeks ago and between this one tonight. These are games that have amazing soundtracks that hardly anyone talks about. Everyone talks about all the classic games, everyone talks about the mainline games, but everyone forgets about the portable games, and they all deserve their time in the sun. Of course, if you're playing an original Game Boy Advance, you don't want them to get their time in the sun, because the original Game Boy Advance was backlit, and so if they had their time in the sun, you wouldn't see the screen. But, you know... Honestly, see, after playing a GBA SB and having a backlit screen for the first time, um, going back to the original Game Boy Advance is... I mean, it is like night and day. <laughs> of course, it's not the first backlit screen I own, because of course the Game Gear had a backlit screen, but it was the first backlit screen on a console that didn't eat up six batteries, six AA batteries within three hours. So yeah, um, basically we are uh, we're going to keep playing this until um, until Smash to Pieces are ready to go with their final broadcast of Animal Crossing, and then we're all going to finish here and go and watch that. But um, whenever that happens, just let just so you know, I will be back tomorrow night. Um, I will be back with my Mega Drive, and we will be properly paying tribute to, um, to Sonic the Hedgehog's 30th birthday this week. Uh, with a full playthrough of the classic trilogy on my original Mega Drive from 1994. Um, it should be good fun. I'm going to set a timer and I'm going to see how fast I can beat all three in a row. And here's a, here's a good place for you to see the difference in the hammer mechanics. That's a normal spring. And then if you whack it with a hammer, like she smacks the ceiling. That might be twice the height, I'm not entirely sure. We'll see how far we get. It might be a little easier for Amy because, um... Or maybe not. I was going to say, I don't know if her hammer has a bigger hitbox than, uh, than Sonic's Insta-Shield. Seems like it, certainly. hitbox for those icicles is really precise. Um, and for the trilogy run tomorrow, I will not be doing an all emeralds run. Um, I will be trying to get the emeralds in uh, 1 and 3 and Knuckles, but I will not be trying to get the emeralds in Sonic 2 because the Sonic 2 special stages suck. I've only, in my in my entire life, I've only ever legitimately beaten. I've only ever collected all seven Chaos Emeralds in Sonic 2 once. Particularly that seventh one. That seventh special stage can just go to hell. There we go.
At some point, I really need to start, because I, again, I know this channel has been very Sonic heavy for the past few weeks, which is, you know, um, fair. But at some point, I do want to uh, sort of dip, dip my toe in the water of, um, of modded Sonic games. Because I've, I've done a couple on this channel a long time ago. I did um, the Sonic 3D Director's Cut, uh, which was the original developer of Sonic 3D, uh, released a patch for the Steam version, like a, like a home patch that... Uh, that um, added in a bunch of things like um, Super Sonic and things like that. And then I played Sonic 3... Uh, was it, Sonic? it wasn't Sonic 3 Air, it was Sonic 3 Complete was the version that I played. Um, which was basically sort of Sonic 3 and Knuckles as the developers originally intended it. Um, but obviously the, uh, the Sonic modding scene is a lot more than that. And you know, things like Playable Amy and Sonic Mania. Playable Amy in a lot of games, actually. And just like like the um, the 16-bit version of Sonic Chaos that someone made, where they took one of the Game Gear games, the, the sort of the, the Game Gear's Sonic 3, if you will, and remade it entirely in the Mega Drive style. Like I want to play all those games. Especially considering it looks like we're not going to be getting a, a new 2D Sonic game anytime soon. Right, it looks like uh, Smash the Pieces are getting ready to go because they just tweeted to say that they're getting ready. So we will uh, wait for them to start and we will raid them. I'm wondering what a raid message should be. Uh, I'm wondering if it should be uh, WTF you caught a coelacanth because uh, Ben caught two coelacanths in the last stream which I could not believe it's a really rare fish in Animal Crossing the problem is then that uh, what someone would have to uh, know how to spell the word coelacanth which I'm not entirely sure Joe is starting until 6.30. Alright, okay. We've got a bit of time then. Let's see if we can finish Amy's story tonight. What about that's at least a C plus? Uh, I don't get it, Deke. I'm sorry. Might have to explain that one. Cool, Lacanth. Yeah, I, I thought it was. I thought it was COE. It's like amoeba, isn't it? That's like you say we just catch a sea bass in um, ACNH. Oh right, okay. Uh, I haven't played New Horizons, so. I mean, we could go with something like I see Locanth, I see France. Oh, hang on. Are we ready for an... Are we ready for another bit of backwards crotch grinding? Apparently not. Work, damn it. Oh, do you have to... There's something weird where, um... Like, the grind rails are only on certain planes. So I think if you jump down from the platform above, you can land on the grind rail. But I think if you jump from it here, you can't. There's some something something odd in the code for that. Oh well. No more crotch grinding for us. Probably for the best, because I imagine Amy's feeling a bit sore down there now. Honestly, that's two games 
Could someone have a look at when Sonic 3, Sonic uh, Advance came out and when Sonic Heroes came out? Because that could be two different Sonic games in the same year that featured two characters grinding rails on their ass. Great message, I do need some more paper. <laughs> Oh, that was the exit. Okay. Okay. So again, this is the, this is the uh, the bottomless pit level. This is the level that uh, is the absolute hell. Sonic Advance for two thousand one. Sonic Heroes two thousand three. Okay. So there were two years. So yeah. So Amy. Amy was the first one to perfect the crotch grind, and then she taught it to Big when uh, he became a member of Team Rose. Which I don't think I put... I don't think I actually put two and two together when I first played that game in 2004. Because it was 2004 for me, it was February 2004 was the European release. Um, I don't think I put the two together that um, Team Rose were named Team Rose because, you know, uh, Amy's the leader and she's Amy Rose. I think I just thought it was like a, just like a sort of flowery name for them based on maybe, you know, like Team Dark and Team Rose, I don't know. Also a bit self-centered of, uh, yeah, that is the point, that exact death there, that exact death there is the death that I, I, I've died there more than anywhere else in this entire game because you have to jump off that and land on the platform. You have to land on that platform. If you don't land on that platform, you die. And then you jump for this. Amy grinds rails like everyone else in Heroes. Yeah. Maybe she took the advanced course. Maybe she taught Big how to do the cross grinding and then she went on the advanced course that uh, everyone else in the game went on and learned how to grind with her feet. You know? Kind of like when you, um... Kind of like when you go, uh, you go skiing and you do, uh, you sort of pizza fries, pizza fries, pizza fries. Or, uh... I'm trying to think of another example that actually works. Ow! Uh, like w when you go cycling and you have um, stabilizers on your bike. But you're still going cycling, but you know, people can tell that. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that crotch grinding is like having stabilizers on your bike. And that's the quote that's going to be on my tombstone. That is a really difficult jump to time. Okay, incoming in 3, 2, 1, go! Maybe she bought better shoes between the past years, she didn't know if her shoes could work in grinding. Maybe, maybe she, maybe she was saving up. Maybe her, um, maybe her Twitch followers uh, were raising money for her to buy some soap shoes, and she hadn't raised all the money by the time of Advance. But by the time of Heroes, two years later, she finally got enough. I did see the comment about starting a donation goal for uh, for me to get a new PC. I, I don't think that's an achievable goal, you know. <laughs> Given that uh, I only got my first donations, I I've had the donation page on my channel open for a year and a half and I got my first donations like three weeks ago. Anyway, Knuckles is very pink in this, uh, this boss fight. Very weird that Robotnik would design a robot that looks like Knuckles and then can't even get the colour right. Although he's very pink in Mania, so maybe he was just, you know... 
Okay, that was quicker than I was expecting. Amy gave Knuckles a hammering there. Okay, once more, best level in the game. Oh, I understand why the developers made him the colour that he is, but for Robotnik, why would he want to tip off Sonic and Tails that it's not the real Knuckles? Makes no goddamn sense. Compels me, though. Imagine if I just spent the entirety of the rest of the stream just talking like Benoit Blanc. Although my, my southern accent isn't the best, so I'd probably end up... Well, if I, apart from dying, I'd probably end up just, you know, like talking Jamaican by the end of the night or something like that. I, was trying to, I, I thought that was an original joke, but I've just realised that that's what happens in Friends. Uh, Joey tries to um, tries to speak with a southern accent and it comes out comes out Jamaican. The sounds will rise again, man. Yeah, so this is the this is the bit here. This is so, yeah. She can just run across the gap. That's what I was going wrong. People complain about Daniel Craig's accent in that movie because it was sounded bad as though it wasn't the best part of the character. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's 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 like when anyone who plays Poirot does an over-exaggerated Belgian accent. You know, it doesn't take away from it, and it's it's not it's not bad in like it it's not bad as in like bad for the sake of bad. It's not bad as in you know like he's not very good at it. It's it's over the top. It is deliberately exaggerated, um, and that kind of adds to it. You know. I don't know if that's what Daniel Craig was going for, but it doesn't, like, I don't, uh, I don't listen to it. I mean, again, I'm not American, so I can't really comment. Ow. Um, but when I hear it, it sounds exaggerated to me. It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound poor. And having said that, I met people, when I was in Oklahoma, I met people who sounded exactly like that. I could not believe, like, it was like I'd stepped into... You know, <laughs> like I'd stepped into uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, or something like that. Someone tried to say that he was going to do a different, do a different accent. I love that idea, but I don't think I've ever seen Daniel Craig do any accent other than because he's in um, he's in Logan Lucky. If you've seen Logan Lucky, it's a re very good heist movie. And he plays uh, a guy with a really strong uh, southern accent in that. Uh, Joe Bang, I think the character's name is. And it's unlike any other role that Daniel Craig has ever had. And he's brilliant in it. Um, but again, it's, it's like an exaggerated southern accent. But I think that's, I think that's why he wanted to do it. He wanted to be able to play an exaggerated, eccentric detective figure like the, the whodunits of old. Um, and they all have like a thing, they all have a something that people identify them for and for Daniel Craig it will be the accent, you know? Like Poirot it was the moustache, Sherlock Holmes it was the pipe and the hat. Every good de detective needs, not necessarily a gimmick, but they need something to set them apart from the rest. That might not be gettable as Amy, I'm not sure.
I can't wait for Knives Out 2, although I am kind of sad that it's going to be on Netflix and not. I mean, maybe it'll be in the in the in the cinemas. I don't know. But when I found out that Netflix were the ones that had bought the rights to it, I yeah, I don't know. Ow. Oh, what was that? What was that, Amy? Oh my god. Some of these levels, it does feel like they designed the level around Sonic and then the other characters just kind of have to fit in around it sometimes. Like... Or, or, or to be more specific, they designed the level around Sonic, Tails and Knuckles and then they thought, why don't we add in Amy and give her a different moveset and then just make her fit in. Can I just go up here? Is this just another... Yeah, okay, so that's just an alternate route. So maybe that's the way I should go as Amy. I love the animations in this game. Love the animations. I feel like for a lot of these sort of playthroughs of relatively short games, maybe I should just stick a timer on it, just so that we can just so we can see just because because I like I like that sort of thing. I like finding out just sort of how long it takes me to beat a game on average, you know. Especially if it's a game you can beat in a single session. It's one of the reasons I started speedrunning Banjo Kazooie when I was so young was because it gave you a completion time at the end of it. Not many games did it back did that back then. Have I just gone in a massive circle? I think I have. Um, David, I'm not entirely sure what that watch time quote, what that watch time command is meant to do. If you're looking, I think it's up time tells you how long I've been streaming for, but I don't know if watch time is something different. Yeah, um, uh, Banjo Kazooie was one of the first games that I started speedrunning because it gave you a timer, a completion timer at the end of it. It told you how long it took you to beat the game. So I wanted to see how fast I could beat it, and I got the time down to around about four hours. Which I finally got under four hours at the end of last year. There weren't many other games that I did that for. The only other one I can think of straight off the top of my head is um, uh, doing the 9 day challenge at Pikmin 1. Other than that, I'm really sure. There must have been others, there must have been others. Okay, so it's a stalker tracker then. <laughs> Imagine Digital David secretly stalking me so that he can, uh, he can take me out in my sleep. Because there can be only one! He will, he will rise as the one true David. Hey, we've got some gravity shenanigans again. 
some Gravigans. Some Shinavity. Sure. Well, I lost all my rings to get that invincibility, so I hope it was worth it. Oh, yeah. I love that they stack like that. I wonder if Sonic was one of the first games to, to be able to do that with its music, to be able to speed up the music to signify because that, that must have been a relatively new effect in the days of, um... Oh no, I suppose, I suppose Mario Brothers did it, didn't it? When you got, when the countdown started getting low, the music would speed up, so... I wonder if it's something in the code to actually say, play these notes faster, or if there are, there are two separate tracks. Although, having said that, on, um, on Sonic on the Mega Drive, uh, it... it, it, it loops or it, it um it seamlessly goes from it seamlessly goes from the slow track to the fast track when you speed up pick up the speed shoes um which i don't think the nez does the nez i imagine they would have been separate tracks but in um in uh, in sonic it it merges from one into the other kind of like what banjo kazooie does with the, like the underwater versions of the um, music tracks which was revolutionary for it I wonder if Sonic was the first one to do the sort of like seamlessly transitioning from slow to fast. This is a nightmare, Zany. Okay, it's not. I just got it. Every time I forget that you're supposed to jump up, that was fast. Like, you just kind of. That's kind of a leap of faith there. You've got no idea that that's where you're supposed to go. Oh, let me in the hole. Well, I managed to crack open my drink, even if I didn't get a chance to have any of it. But yeah. I love the fact that Robotnik's, uh, Robotnik's death egg in this, um, in this game, like, he got some... He, he outsourced his interior decorating for this Death Egg, didn't he? For this spaceship. Like, nothing about Robotnik says to me, yes, I want I want rainbow lights, I want disco lights. I mean, maybe he is trying to tell us something. Maybe he's, uh, you know, it is Pride Month. You know, you've got the rainbow lights in the top right, you've got the, uh, the bi-colours on the... Uh, the... Um, those sort of striped things at the back. Maybe this is his way of, uh, you know, giving us a bit of character development that we haven't had before. Oh, come on, that was the lamest death of all time. But hey, we made it to the we made it to the um the last level with Amy, um, apart from the final zone. Giving myself Eggman Line and Sonic Colors in general. I think this is the same he was appreciating before. Yeah, maybe he just got more colourful as he, um, you know, uh, as the games went on. Because certainly, if you look at, um, if you look at Death Egg in, uh, if you look at Death Egg in Sonic 2, if you look at Scrap Brain, Death Egg in Sonic 2, Death Egg in Sonic 3, it's all greys and blacks. And then you get to Cosmic Angel here, and it is a disco party. I'll go live at uh, 20 past with this stream will start screen. Okay, fantastic. I mean, I feel I feel a bit I feel a bit bad about raiding a um, raiding a starting screen, but at the same time, it's a pre-recording, so you know it's not like there's going to be any sort of uh, reaction to the raid that we're going to miss. So. We'll see how things go. So, 
Okay, so... Uh, five minutes. Can can I beat Cosmic Angel in Final Zone in five minutes with Amy? Probably not, given how much I'm just getting hurt casually, but... Uh, the best time to raid is... Yeah, but well... The be yeah, if, if it's if it's if it's all all of us getting together and watching a pre-recorded stream or a pre-recorded sort of compilation, then then yeah. But in terms of a raid in general, you want to see that you want to see the person react to the raid. You know, you want to say hi to them. You don't want to say hi to their starting screen. You know. So, I don't know. But yeah, so so that we don't miss any of Animal Crossing, we'll. Um, uh, I think we will. We'll raid the starting screen. Because yeah, and then that'll be uh, that'll be Animal Crossing done, and the uh, the GameCube era will have officially begun for Smash the Pieces, which is exciting. Going to be in it for a while, but uh, yeah. Right here we go. Ow. First thing you do in this boss, immediately lose all of your rings. He says the video probably is going to start at exactly half past, so he should have time to finish the interview. Should being the operative word, because we're back at this pain in the ass boss that we've got here. Except we're playing with a much harder character. The <laughs> big hun. The GameCube era has. And actually, with that comment, you've just reminded me that I actually have an unfinished GameCube game again that I added to my backlog uh, a few weeks ago. Because, just your Yoda quote there, just reminded me that I finally, finally picked up Rogue Leader for the GameCube. Uh, which I originally wanted to have in my pre-order when I bought my GameCube on launch day back in May 2002 and uh, I never did and then just never got around to buying it again so I'm gonna have to play that on stream at some point. I have played through it before I borrowed it from a friend many years ago but that'll be good to go because I think that Rogue Leader on the GameCube is one of the best Star Wars games to be ever be made. And it wasn't that expensive either I think I paid maybe £25 for it which, for a GameCube game that's never been ported anywhere else, is really, really good value, I think. And it had it had the box and the manual and everything. It was, you know, it was like new. Which is a very, 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 like, like the term like new can carry a lot of weight. Like, that's that's doing a lot of heavy lifting, the term like new. But it was actually, it was actually all right. So yeah, that should be good fun to do sometime. And there we go! One of the few games that Dolphin was purely, so original copy should have more value. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you, but um, but yeah. I mean, I was just sharing with, uh, I was chatting with Joe recently about um, because um, I believe uh, uh, I believe original sound chat is doing Tombi or Tumba, um, either this week or next week or quite soon, and I was chatting with uh, Joe because he was asking me about the game and I mentioned to him just how much that game costs if you want to buy it uh, buy a physical copy these days and uh, the numbers are astonishing even compared to 10 years ago when I bought my copy because 10 years ago when I bought my copy of Toomba um, it was going for £120 um, and I got my copy by buying from a guy in Portugal who was selling it for 30 which even with the international shipping was cheaper than uh, than buying a copy uh, that was being sold here. And now, uh, I looked at it recently on eBay and copies in the UK were going for £500. Uh, that's an opened copy. A sealed copy was going for about 1200 And in the US, there was a copy, a sealed copy of Toomba for PlayStation 1 that was going for $6,800 on eBay. So, uh, so yeah. Video game preservation is an expensive business. But, you never know, if you still have your old games, they might, you know, get you a house someday. 
you know, there'll be inheritance for your grandkids. I think this is the final. Th this is the final boss, isn't it? Because Amy doesn't play the, uh, the the supersonic boss. Ah! And yeah, you lose your ring if you get caught by the hand. And I'm dead. Okay. I recently sold a copy of Pokemon Box and that basically paid my rent that month. Wow! See, this is the thing. There's always the danger. Do you sell it? Like, I mean, I, I, I hardly ever sell any of my games. I, I, I have games that I bought, didn't like, never played again, but I still own them. Because again, you might go back to them someday. But also because... Um, you never know if it's actually going to go up or down in value with these things. Like, I'm thinking of all the people that owned copies of Metroid Prime Trilogy before it got added to the Wii U. Like, before Metroid Prime Trilogy got added to the Wii U, those copies were going for huge sums. And Metroid Prime Trilogy physical copies still go for quite a lot, but they don't go for nearly as much as they did before it got a release. Hey, Big Crusades, how are you doing? Okay, we've got one life left. We're running out of time. We've got nine minutes. I just got the push notification to say the Nintendo World Report is live, so we have nine minutes to try and beat the game as Amy and Sonic in the same stream. I'm already down to one life. It should be easier, you'd think, because Amy's hammer has a bigger hitbox than Sonic's did, but... You're basically, you're trying to... You're playing a game of, can I hit Robotnik, get hit, and retrieve the ring that I will inevitably lose before it disappears. Oh no, you don't. Got it back. And that's it, the ring's gone. That's it! That's it! We did it! That was Sonic Advance twice! And then she just... Bang! She just head slams into the plane. And look who came to rescue her! Oh, it's a happy ending for all involved. Uh, Sonic, that's not the angle you want to be looking at Amy at. Amy? We're not going to go there. Amy should be a playable character in every 2D Sonic game. I will die on this hill. Much like I died in a lot of the con a lot of the levels there. So yeah, that uh, kind of went perfectly. Uh, ended perfectly. I mean, it started an hour later than I was <laughs> than I wanted, but uh, we managed to get through a full playthrough of Sonic and uh, of Amy. And uh, yeah, uh, what can I say? Happy twentieth birthday to the Game Boy Advance. Uh, with your invisible screen. For a while I thought the Nintendo, the Tornado was Tails was playing, but then I heard it was really Sonic somewhere, at least the Tornado one. I mean, it has, that's the thing, it has Sonic's name on the side, despite the fact that Tails is the only one that ever pilots it. Actually, no, I think if, um, if, if you play as Tails, then Sonic pilots it, that would make more sense. But, yeah. Why didn't you use my play in the Tornado? Does he really? Oh, no, hang on, hang on. Uh, I don't know, Matt, who you're referring to. Are you saying, like, um, does, Tail, does Tails use... Does Tails say, why didn't you use my plane? Or does Sonic say, why didn't you use my plane? Sonic says that. Oh, right, okay. So, basically, Tails is Sonic's chauffeur. Tails is the Jarvis to Sonic's uh, Howard Stark. You don't... You don't know that you don't trust the localization. Yeah, that's fair. Right. So we know what we must do. I'm going to get up.
get an Nintendo World Report. So, what did we agree that the raid message was going to be? Because again, no one's going to be there to react to it. It's going to be a pre-recording. So, um, is that what Chaos Control is? <laughs> Okay, I, I'm terrible at coming up with raid messages. Um, I've just realized, I've, I've just noticed the um, the uh, the alerts are going into the, they're cutting into the screen. <laughs> Oops. Um, all right. Uh, right. So yeah, I, so um, yeah. While we're thinking of a raid message, uh, I will be back tomorrow with um, uh, with a proper. Uh, once it's once it's the weekend, I can do this. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with my Mega Drive and the Classic Trilogy. I will be doing a speed run of the Classic Trilogy on my original hardware. I say speed run; it's going to take me several hours, but we're going to do it back to back to back. It's going to be very good fun. Um, so thank you so much for joining me, guys. As always. Um, uh, so I need to I need to change my audio over. Um, and then we're going to uh, to raid. Um, I want to say something something about the sealer cat. Less speed run and more long play. Yeah, except I will be trying to go as fast as possible. Um, I'm playing them back to back to back. We'll, we'll, we'll see. And it will basically be a casual playthrough, but with a timer in the corner. So uh, so yeah. But we'll call it whatever we want. I'll, I'll put the speedrun tag on and see how many complaints I get from people actually looking for Sonic speedruns. <laughs> um, so why don't we go... Since we were talking about uh, crotch grinding earlier, no context. That is our raid message. <laughs> Offer no context whatsoever, and then uh, and then we can uh, we can bemuse and befuddle and uh, creep out uh, everyone in the Nintendo World Report chat. So yeah, guys, I'm going to go to my uh, I'm going to go to my uh, ending screen, and then we're going to raid. Um, so thanks very much again guys uh, we finally got through Sonic Advance an hour later than planned but we uh, we made it with uh, and we got two full playthroughs in um, so yeah uh, I'll see you for Animal Crossing and I'll see you tomorrow for the classic Sonic trilogy thanks very much guys enjoy Smash to Pieces and uh, yeah have a good night